Hello everyone, today our puppet show will focus on the evolution of birds. The story starts in 1860, when a feather was found in Bavaria. This and later fossils confirm the existence of arc, ar, archi, archeo, Archaeopteryx, which is considered the link between birds and reptiles. It is dated back all the way to the Jurassic period, which is around 140 million years ago. Holy cow, that's a long time ago. Now we have the class Aves, which all birds belong to. This is where it gets kind of confusing, with really long names, so we're going to use a chart. Subclass Archaeornithes are the old ancestral birds. All are extinct in Jurassic fossils, where Archaeopteryx would fall. They had remnants of reptiles including clawed wing, reptilian rib cage, and a long bony tail. Next is the subclass Neornithes, which are the newer birds. Under that are three distinct superorders, Odontognathae, Paleognathae, and Neognathae. Birds in the superorder Odontognathae are all extinct from the Cretaceous period and still held some reptilian features, namely being toothed. Examples of this superorder are Hesperornis and Ichthyornis. Next is superorder Paleognathae, which means ancient jaw, as they still have a primitive palate. These are modern birds grouped further into five orders that either don't fly or don't fly very well because their keel plate isn't well developed or even present. Examples of the super order are tenemouse and kiwis. Finally, there is the super order of neognathae, which means new jaw, as they have a modern flexible palate. There is a lot of diversity in the super order, with 25 orders ranging from penguins and waterfowl to mouse birds and perching birds. As you can see in this sketch of an avian skull, the modern bird shares some structural features with reptiles. This further supports the theory that birds have evolved from reptilian ancestors. Let's take a closer look. Around the bird's eye, there's a sclerotic ring. Birds and reptiles have oblong eyes, as opposed to the spherical eyes that humans have. The sclerotic ring supports this oblong shape. Looking at the ears of reptiles and birds, we can see that there is a single middle ear bone. In contrast, let's look at a human ear. We can see that there are three middle ear bones. Some other similarities include the expanded lateral brain case, the lower jaw is composed of several bones, and the single occipital condyle, which connects the skull to the spine in a ball and socket fashion. At first glance, it is shocking to think that birds and reptiles could be related, but by taking a closer look at their anatomical features, we can see that there are many similarities. So why did birds need to change? Why did they evolve from reptiles? No one knows this answer for sure, but we can make several educated guesses. Birds may have lost some of their reptilian features because it was beneficial to their survival. There was a niche that needed to be filled, and with the adaptations of feathers, flight, and dietary changes, they were able to fill that niche and thrive. Now you have a better understanding of avian evolution from dinosaurs to parrots.